Hey guys, it's Ellen here, and today we're doing something really fun. We're painting plaids. I show you how to make this Burberry type plaid and this other kind of diagonal plaid. And then we incorporate it into a buffalo check plaid into a pumpkin. Um, you can see how you can interpret both the plaids into something that you want to make for yourself. So this is very simple, easy tutorial anybody can do. Just a few colors and one brush. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and let's get started. All right, guys, for this fun little exercise, I'm going to go over my supplies. Um, I have some pieces of Archer's 100% cotton cold pressed paper here. This random sizes is probably like five by seven and whatnot. Um, my little palette here holding my paints, paper towel. I'll be using my Princeton long round and my Princeton six long round brush uh, paints. I have a Cadmium Yellow Deep, Van Dyke Brown, Quinacridone Magenta. I have Prussian blue. <laughs> you know what's kind of funny? All this time I've been saying I have um, olive green watercolor and I just have olive green gouache. But it's like I told you on these videos, you can use gouache like watercolor, so I'll keep continuing doing that. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. Um, it's so versatile. So we're going to have fun with this. So, painting plaid. I love doing this. Um, I do this in like uh, icons and whatnot too. So we're going to show you how to do that as well. So we're going to mix up some color. Let's try and do like a Burberry color plaid. So we could take the Van Dyke brown, which is kind of like a nice little brown color, add a little yellow. We want to make a beige. And if you have a test piece of paper, like a little scrap, it always helps. And that's a little too dark. I'm going to add a little yellow, a little bit of red. Oops. Again with the brown. We want like a nice pretty beige color. That. And it's going to be watered down because you want it light. See, now that's looking a little too red. That's why you have these test strips. Too much yellow I put in there. I can tell already. All right, we'll add a little more Van Dyke Brown. I think we're going to get the color we want. It's almost the color, pretty much close enough to this. Burberry kind of color brown. So I'm going to take our brush and we're going to do like a wide stripe, okay, in this beige color. Just like a wide stripe. You see that? Pretty beige color. We're going to leave a, a space of white. And we're going to do another beige, beige. The trick with plaid with watercolor is you want the layers to dry because you don't want the blending, right? So really, theoretically, you could use cheaper paper if you wanted to. Um, but if the rest of your design is going to be where you're going to be doing some wet on wet and some pretty details, you might want to keep with the nicer paper. A little bit wider here. And we'll do another one, just space that one out. Make sure you mix up enough paint because you're going to need it. <laughs> okay. Now, you get the beige color, you're going to have to let that dry. I'm going to add more of this color tone in here because we're going to cross over it with more colors. Um, you can cross over it with the beige color now if you want to, but I wouldn't cross over it with any other colors yet. See what I mean by cross over is making another stripe going across and where it meets the first one you put down it should be a little bit darker if not we're going to come back in and fix that when it dries so I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to come back okay so I let that dry now we're going to mix up uh, a nice burgundy color so I got my magenta with my yellow keep adding that and add a little of this Prussian blue or peacock blue whatever blue you got 
and one with yellow. I'm going to keep mixing until I get this nice cranberry red color, which I have. If you water it down too much, it's going to be pink. I'll show you in the little, the little card here. See? It's going to look pink. You don't want pink. You want like a cranberry burgundy color. I'm adding a bunch of different colors to get that. There we go. We've got the color. Okay. So now that we have the beige color, and this is dry, we can go in and add this red stripe down here. Just like that. And then we're going to add two red stripes going across. One, two, <laughs> and we'll add another one up here. Right. Bring that off. This is when you can mix black, but I'm just going to use black. So I have black way over here. You can't see it in this messy part of my palette, which I love. I know people don't like to do that, but I love a messy palette. <laughs> it's just like it's creating unique colors when you have it like that. So then the black, we're going to put three stripes down here. One, two, three. Is it looking barbarous to you? Right? And then we're going to do one across, and then one across. Oops. And then we're going to do three up here again. One, two, water it down a little bit, three. Like I said, where the cross part meets this, see, it should get a little dark, but if it's not, you just go back in with your color and fill it in, the little square. Because theoretically, when the threads cross each other, it will get darker in that section. So all you do is take your paint and go in and make it darker right in those areas. And you have a pretty plaid. And of course you can do one here. Then you've got your fallish kind of looking Burberry plaid. Oops, a little too much black. Very simple. I'm gonna go across this one. And do another one here. And again, where they meet, I'm going to go in. That's bleeding a little too much. Oops, stop. <laughs> Lift it up. You might want to wait till that dries a little bit before you go back in. And same with the red. The red crisscrossed here. So we're going to go back in and add the deeper tone of red where the crisscross is. And we add another one over here. And you've got that Burberry looking plaid. If it bleeds, don't go crazy. Just lift up the paint with your brush right away. You'll be fine. We'll let that dry a bit and work on another plaid while that's drying. Now, another cool way to do a plaid is a cross vertical plaid. I mean, excuse me, diagonal plaid. Ugh, I'm not using my brain cells today. Let's do some orange color. I have the brilliant orange with the yellow. Let's get some fall tones in here. A little bit of the red and a touch of brown. Mix whatever color you want. Just giving you an example. So again, this time we're going to do it on an angle. Right? We got this bright, pretty orangey color. And depending how you want the stripes, these ones we did fat ones and skinny ones. You can make a little more even tone here. So the similar width, but again, on a diagonal. It's a good idea to mix up a lot of paint 
um, when using this paper because it soaks it up fairly quickly. See, I'm just going to fill this in, blah, blah, blah. While you're doing this color, here's another little trick. Well, not a trick, but way to make a nice cute plaid. I'm going to try and just finish the end so it doesn't look so ugly. There we go. So then you could take a brown or the red. Let's just use the brown, the Van Dyke brown. And we're going to take, oh, mixed in with some blue there, a little sneaky little brown, uh, the tip of the brush, and we're going to do small little lines right next to the wider one you did. See that? I'll tell you what's really hard to paint is a tartan plaid. I used to work in a print studio in Manhattan and these beautiful Korean girls would make these tartan plaids by hand with spray brush, with the, the airbrush. I could not understand how they could do that. So we're going to do that for now. We're going to let that dry. While that's drying, we're going to go back into this guy and get that black area darker. like we talked about, because the threads would meet each other in those sections, and so they should be darker in those little squares. And it doesn't have to be perfectly, you know, I'm not making it perfect in the square areas by any means. You don't want it too dark. You want it to mesh well with the paint you just put down. And same with the red. Like I said, you go back in and just fill in those little cross hatches. Now, this is still wet. It's fairly dry. I'm going to take that color again. Now, I probably should have mixed up a lot of it, but I didn't. Oh, that's okay. I'll try and duplicate it as much as I can. And we're going to cross it going the other way. Filling it in. Not too much paint. I got to water this now. Look at that. Like magic. If it's pretty wet, see that it already creates that darker center because it's a layering effect. That's why you wait for it kind of dries and then you just create that natural layering effect and it will be darker. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. It's kind of how you make a gingham, uh, but it's a diagonal one. Again, we take this brown and we're going to go on the sides and look how simple and cute that plaid is, right? Voila. And then another trick I'll show you. Take another color if you want, like this red. I'm going to put some more deeper tone in it. And less water, actually. And then go right in the middle. Now it's bleeding a little bit because it's still wet. Try and take off some water on that. But I kind of like the look. And then you get that. How pretty is that plaid? Now, showing you how to put a plaid in an object. So, I got a little pumpkin here that I drew out, right? And we could do the Burberry plaid or we could do a gingham type plaid. I think I'll make it easy for you guys and do a gingham type plaid. So, we could do black, we could do brown. I'm going to do like a a black color because the the black um, check thing is really popular today. So let's keep with something that's a little popular. So I'm watering down my black 
on this side of the palette. Just like I did with the other colors. So it's going to have bumps, right? So I drew out the pumpkin. Here's the little lines of the creases. You're going to go like this. Bump. With the pumpkins bumping, see? Woohoo! Bump. <laughs> and we're just going to fill those in with that gray tone. Remember, this is supposed to be fun. Don't get stressed out. Everyone's freaking out today. I don't need you freaking out, people. You're supposed to have fun when you paint. So I'm going to fill those in. Just like that. See how I'm doing this little creases? And as you're doing the creases, because it's in a crease, you kind of have to do some shading too. I know, I'm going to make your life crazy right now. But it will look more, more realistic. So we'll grab a little darker tone. And we'll hit the edges in here too. In here. And then keep going with the, the gray. A little bumpy. Just like this. Voila. So it's kind of like a buffalo check we're going to create. Mine's a little sloppy because I'm trying to go a little fast. Again, I can go and add some deeper tones on the edges. And I'll probably do a little one down here so you get the edge of the pumpkin. So I'm going to dry this and come back. All right, we're back. So now we take that same gray, right? And I'm going to go, it's a bigger plaid. I'm going to curve it like the curve of the picture of the pumpkin. And then this will be sneaking in here, right? Curvature of the pumpkin. Like magic, it's got that darker edge where it meets the other one, right? It's a layering effect. Look how fun and cute this pumpkin is. I'm sorry. I'm loving it. And then go in here again. You guys can totally do this. What a cute card it would be, right? If you like that farmhouse look. Not everybody likes that look. Make this one a little bit wider. But look how cute. And then if you just didn't want to keep it like this and you wanted to add like, like we do with the orange one, you can put like the little skinny lines next to it. So it just makes it more interesting like a plaid plaid. Of course, we're going to let this dry again to go into this, you know, it's a little bit darker, but you might want to add a little more darkness to it. You can keep the stem in the, like a black tone or make it orange. I might make it a little black or buy a little green. I have that um, pretty olive green. I'll add some of that brown to it, maybe a little black. Put that green right there. It'd be kind of nice change of pace from the gray. But you could just make it black. You don't have to make it green. Grab the brown. Do a little, a little squiggly. Look how cute. Isn't that so cute? <laughs> you can put some pretty flowers behind it. You know, play around. I'm going to dry this and come back because I don't want to bleed it. All right, we're back. So again, you can go into the blackish with the darker areas. It's a little, that's a little too dark black. I'm going to take off some of that paint. 
just add a little bit darker tone not too much if you want to punch it up a little bit or you can leave it light like you had before I think it's really cute plaids are fun take any element that you like a shirt pants hell even a coffee cup and make it plaid go crazy see I'm just adding that darker tone and it really just pulls it all together pretty little gang on buffalo chuck right so many ways to make plaids so many things you can do plaids with so they get that Burberry one you get the cross one and one more little chick I'll show you with the little mini piece of paper here let me zoom in um, you don't even have to do those wishy-washy um, colors and then go on top of each other here's the red you can just take this color and again with the tip of your brush little lines two three again one two three two pay no attention to my stomach <laughs> and then crisscross it again one look at that look how simple that was another cute plaid you know and you don't have to be on diagonal you can do it straight up and down also just a bunch of different ways to make plaids so I hope you guys enjoy this little fun plaid tutorial um, don't forget to hear check the um, excuse me hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up uh, check out my patreon on Thursdays I have exclusive videos over there uh, I'm going to do more behind the scenes there. It's just been really busy this week and last week. I'm just insane with work. Um, trying to do everything and it's just difficult. So, um, And also my um, acrylic channel, it's called Amazing Art. It's in the description box and on the about page. Go check those out. Those are the acrylic demos. So I hope you guys have a fantastic day and play around with plaid. Play around with the colors of it. You know, do, like I said, do some wide ones and skinny ones and little skinny ones. You'll have so much fun and you can do it in objects. Just, I can't wait to see what you come up with. Take care, guys. I'll speak to you soon.